Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Philippians 4 verse 8. Our topic for today is think good thoughts. Think good thoughts. In this fourth and final chapter of the letter to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul gives some closing exhortations. After a general expression of appreciation to the church at Philippi, he urges two individuals, Yodia and Sintichi, to be of the same mind in the Lord. It is obvious from what Paul writes that these women were very supportive of his ministry. He writes, and I quote, they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel. End of quote. It is for this reason that Paul takes an interest in urging them to be of the same mind. And then he goes on to encourage an unnamed individual referred to in the passage as his loyal companion to make a direct intervention to help Euodia and Sintishi with their issue to help them to resolve whatever problem existed between them. Now, who were these women and what was going on between them? Evidently, they were prominent members of the church at Philippi to whom Paul addresses this letter. And they did a lot to help Paul in his work, in his ministry. It appears that these women had a disagreement. We don't know for certain what they were quarreling about. What the disagreement was all about. Some scholars um, even suggests that the two of them might have had a disagreement with the rest of the church. That is what some scholars suggest. But it is the general view that the disagreement was between the two of them. That Yodia and Sintichi had some kind of falling out. And they were prominent women in the church. They had some argument, some quarrel that affected their relationship. Now, Paul's concern was how this disagreement and this disunity between these two leading women would affect the rest of the church. What would the fallout be as a result of their falling out with each other? The rift between Euodia and Sintishi threatened the fellowship of the church. And my friends, we only need to think about this a bit and reflect on how the way leaders 
relate to each other can affect those who look up to them. When those that you look to for leadership are divided, it has a way of trickling down and affecting those who look up to them, those whom they lead. So Paul exhorts Yodia and Sintichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. In other words, they should agree. They should somehow come together, work through their problem for the Lord's sake and in the interest of the church's witness. Having addressed these two prominent women on the matter affecting them, the issue existing between them, Paul continues in Philippians chapter 4 with his exhortations. And he ends with these words that are our text for today. Finally, he says, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Think about these things. Hence our theme for today, think good thoughts. Think on these things, my friends. I want to mention, first of all, that what we think about can impact the state of the church and community. What we think about as members of the church, as Yodia and Sintishi were members of the church, and members of this community, this Fulton community or whatever community we are a part of, what we think about impacts the state of the church and the community. Paul's words in today's text were meant for all who were part of the church at Philippi, including the feuding sisters, the feuding women, Yodia and Sintichi. He, his, his appeal to them was to be of the same mind in the Lord. That sounds like an appeal for unity, an appeal to come together, to, to, to work through their difficulties. Friends, problems will always arise in our relationships. We won't always agree on every matter. But for the sake of the fellowship, for the sake of the community, we have to find a way to overcome our differences. So... The mind, you see, is the seat of our thoughts. And, and what we think about affects what the church is like and what the community is like, or what the country is like for that matter. So if the two women mentioned in the passage and all the members of the church would think about what is true, what is honorable, what is just, what is pure, what is pleasing, what is commendable that would help their relationship and the church as a whole, the community as a whole would benefit if we would think on these things. So think good thoughts. The other thing that I'd like us to remember today is that what we think about shapes our character and our conduct. What we think about shapes our character and our conduct. Here, here is something worth remembering. It's a quote. I quote, it has been said, what we are not what we think we are. We are not what we think we are, but what we think we are. 
We are not what we think we are, but what we think we are. End of quote. In other words, the things about which we think, the things on which we dwell, the things that we store up in our minds, the things that preoccupy our minds, shape who we become. So a thought, you reap an action. So an action, you reap a habit. So a habit, you reap a character. So a character, you reap a destiny. That's a saying that I learned when I was growing up. So what we sow is what we reap. Therefore, my friends, we should watch the thoughts that we sow in our minds or that we sow in the minds of the young and the impressionable. Because what we think about, the thoughts that we sow in our minds and in the minds of others help to shape character and conduct. So think good thoughts. Finally, my friends, what we think about influences our choices and our course. What we think about will influence our choices and our course. What Paul says in our text today would, would form uh, what I call a filter for what we allow to enter into our minds. I, I read a story about a young man who went up from his home in the country to the city to take his degree in the university there. As a resident student, he had his own room in the hostel. After he had settled in, his mother, a godly, devoted Christian, decided to pay him a visit. She found that he was comfortably settled and was taking an interest in the various courses of study to prepare him for his degree. But she was very shocked to see the kind of pictures he had fixed to the walls of his room in the hostel. They were portraits of semi-dressed artists, film stars, and suggested much that was sensual and unbecoming of a young man who had been reared and trained at home as he had been. The mother said not a word. She made no comment. Instead of expressing her displeasure, the story says she went home, had her photo taken, and sent him the very best that the phot photographer could provide with a request that he would hang it in his room. The next time she visited him, all the other pictures were gone. Only his mother's photograph adorned the wall. When she asked him about it, he replied, you see, mother, I could not have those pictures alongside of yours. They would be out of place. I could not have those pictures alongside of yours. They would be out of place. Friends, when we think about this story and about the text for today, when we think on what is true, we cannot have dishonest um, dishonesty and lies alongside that which we think about which is true. When we think on what is honorable, when we allow honorable thoughts to fill our minds, we cannot accept dishonorable behavior alongside it. When we think on 
what is just. It would be out of place to justify injustice and wrongdoing. The two just can't go together. If, if our minds are filled with that which is just, we cannot justify injustice and wrongdoing. When we think on that which is pure, it would be out of place to have corruption and impurity alongside it. When we think on that which is pleasing or lovely, we can take no pleasure in anything that is displeasing. Displeasing to God, anything that is an affront to God. Anything that is not in keeping with the word and the standard of God, we cannot accept. When we think on that which is commendable, when we fill our minds with commendable thoughts, we cannot participate in anything that we cannot commend to our children or to the young. So what we think on then will influence our moral, political, and every choice that we make. It will influence the course that we pursue in life. What we value, what we stand for, what we sanction, what we approve. So let truth, let honor, let purity, let a desire for what is just and pleasing and commendable be what you think about and let it dictate the choices you make in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.